Yeah, hi all, uh, it's Rob here from uh, heatengineer.com. I've uh, been asked to do a video um, on uh, the IMI High Tools app, which um, which we use quite a lot with uh, in conjunction with our own software. Um, it's a pretty good uh, tool um, for doing day-to-day -day calculations, getting your pipe sizing correct. Um, and what I wanted to do is, it's, so many people have used this uh, used this app, but they have different settings because it is a worldwide app. Uh, and a lot of people, unfortunately, have the wrong settings in it, which would match the kind of UK's usage. So I thought I'd do a video on how to do it, how I use it on a day-to-day -day basis, and how it can be used in conjunction with our own software. So you can download from the um, uh, um, App Store or Google Play, um, and it's just called IMI High Tools, which you can just see on my screen where my mouse is, is, is showing. So we just literally click on the app to open it up. Um, and you will see, I'll just move my mouse out of the way, and you will see a page like this. Now, in order to start setting this up, there's a couple of things that we need to do. So Apple, this is, uh, this, what you're seeing on the screen is, is um, uh, an Android, sorry, an, an, an Apple device. So the, the, the app was originally made for iOS, um, but it works equally well on, on um, um, Android as well. But some of the settings are slightly different, so don't be too worried as we as we uh, go through go along if you don't have the other settings. Now, on a um, uh, iOS, as you're seeing on the screen here, you'll see on the bottom right hand corner you'll see more. So if you click on that more, um, you will. Let me just go back to that home page. There, if you click on click on the more, you'll come up with this page. Now, on the Android, it just says settings. So click on settings and you'll come to this page. And the very, very first thing that you want to do is at the bottom there, you'll see region. And you want to click on that and make sure that you've got United Kingdom um, highlighted. The next thing that you want to do is go up to the second one down, which is units. So you click on units and you'll see this page that will come up. Now this is where sometimes I say this is iOS, but sometimes you will see on the Android devices that you don't have. I think, I think, in fact, I don't even think you have actuator speed and actuator stroke at the top. But other than that, the ones that I really, really want you to concentrate on in this to get to get exactly the same readings as all of us is uh, where it says the differential pressure. That must be in kPa. Now, some people teach in in uh, uh, millimeters and and uh, of, of head. I'm teaching in KPA, this is the way that I would teach it and the way I would use it uh, because pumps are sized in KPA and I'll come to that in a, in a short while. So the first one is differential pressure to make sure that is definitely in KPA. Now you can copy all of them that are on my screen there. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a few as you can see, but all you need to do is just click on them and make sure they look exactly the same as mine. Uh, pause the video, obviously, if you want to, to try and catch up. But say so the important ones are the differential pressure in KPA, we then want our energy, which is also very important, in kilowatt hours. And if you want to change them, you just would literally just click on uh, to the energy one, and then it will give you the different drop downs as to what you as to what you would you, you, you would require. So yes, yeah, so energy in uh, kilowatt hours. Very important. The next one, flow. We want that in liters per second, as is shown on the screen. Um, we do need a heat transfer in uh, watts per meter squared Kelvin. Uh, the next length is important. We want that in meters. So in M, as you can see on the screen. The next one, which is also very important because we're working in, in this pressure drop scenario, which was we're trying to size pipe work. We need that in pascals per meter. So PA forward slash M, as you can see on the screen. Uh, mass in kilograms, power in kilowatts, pressure we want in bar, as you can see there. I think most uh, most of us understand bar. Um, roughness in millimeters. Now that is uh, is is uh, um, something that's also quite important. Sound pressure level in dB. The next one, very 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 important that everybody gets this one correct, is a specific heat. We want it exactly as it's shown on the screen, which is kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, temperature difference and temperature can stay in centigrade. Thermal conductivity in watts per meter Kelvin. Um, thickness in millimeters. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. The next one that is very important, actually no, put the, the valve coefficient is good to be in KV because that will help you specify a bit later on down the line. 
Uh, the next one, very important, is velocity. We want that velocity in meters per second. Uh, voltage is uh, in V, obviously. Volume in liters. Um, and I choose water hardness in parts per million, but you can use whatever you would like to do. Once that's done, you then would click back on more or back into settings, and all of those parameters will stay the same. Now, the next thing you want to click on is technical parameters. So you click on technical parameters, um, and it all comes up exactly as mine. Now, I've clicked, uh, I've, I've highlighted hide valves deleted from range. Uh, if you're doing specific jobs um, and you're trying to recognize valves, you can leave that one unticked um, that, that come from the IMI range. But if you copy everything that is on my page there, that just gives you for commercial usage. Now, this is where there's a, this, uh, the, the, the SIBSI guides actually state that target linear pressure drops um, are between 300 and 500 pascals per meter. So for every one meter of pipe work, up to 300 pascals um, of, of, of resistance within that. I try to stick this down uh, to, to make it uh, the, the, the choices of your pipe work and the choices of your fittings as close to what the SIBSI guide is, is, is arguing for. And I would always say stick to 300. So get your target linear pressure drop to 300 pascals per meter and your linear pressure drop to 300 pascals per meter. So your maximum linear pressure drop. Now, SIBSI also states that your um, water velocities are 0 0.5 to 1.5. Now, I generally will always um, design every system, every plumbing system that I ever design, I design to about one meter per second or just around one meter per second. And that doesn't matter whether it's heating flow or returns, hot or cold systems, even mains hot cold systems, it doesn't matter. Try and design all your pipe work for one meter per second. And the reason that I say that is, there's, well, there's a couple of reasons here. When you start getting higher than this, when you start, certainly when you start going over one and a half meters per second in velocity, you start to get vo system volume or system noise. And I'm sure everybody's heard of that, you know, water hammers and that kind of thing. But you'll also with that, you'll get start to get system erosion or possible component failure, etc., because the velocity is too high. So if you try and design and just keep a keep a rule of thumb and try and design everything at around one meter per second. So what we've done in, to, in order to get a decent um, uh, understanding and you can make engineering decisions about this, I've set these at 0 0.9 to 1.5. Now, what happens sometimes on the um, uh, iOS uh, app set up when you try to change it to 0 0.9 to 1.5 and then you move down the page it goes back to a uh, previous generic setting if it does that you can do it a couple of times but normally if you just click done or just or click more at the top to go back to the to back to the technical parameters page it should uh, it, it should save it once it has saved it will not change it will always stay the same but make sure that the uh, target water velocity of 0 0.9 is highlighted so that box is ticked so it goes orange as you can see on the right hand side of the page there. Uh, the next thing is because it's a worldwide app it's got all different types of pipe work and, and uh, um, materials that, uh, that, that are used throughout around the globe. All we want to do as you can see on the page there we just want those two coppers that are, are ticked there so copper table X and copper table Y. I uh, don't see very much table Z anymore um, you, you might want to highlight that if you're doing some older water mains where you've got some table Z in the ground. Uh, but then nothing else is ticked right the way down until you get to GFPE, Henko Multilayer, Mapres C, Mapres E, and PEX, all highlighted. You can add any of the others that you want to want to add. I just specifically for my own um, use and, and what I kind of endorse is, is, uh, is, is no plastic pipe work within heating systems. So I don't include them. Um, then you want all of your British standard BS1387 um, steels. So you're galvanized, you're heavy and you're medium. Get all those three ticked. And then your steel British standard 3600. And that should be all you need. Okay, so once they're done, again, pause the video if you need to go through that and change any ones you've done. Once you've got that and it's all finished, you can click on your home and then you're, we're, we're ready to go. That means all your settings are set 
to how we would want to use them in the UK. That's exactly how I set them and exactly how I use this um, app for domestic. It doesn't matter if you're if you're designing a one bedroom flat or a, or a thousand bedroom hotel. It makes no difference. This will do exactly the same things for you. So the next thing that you want to do, and this is crucial to any um, uh, design that you're going to do, because the specific heat capacity of water, generally about 4.183 um, at, uh, that's kilojoules um, per kilogram, at, uh, at 55 degrees flow temperature. So what we need to do first of all is at the bottom of the page is click on the fluids, which is right at the bottom of the page. And you can see on the top left, I've highlighted 55 degrees. Now you can change that to whatever system that you want to do. But because of new part L regulations, we're saying maximum flow temperatures of 55 degrees. This makes it much, much easier for us to, to, uh, to, to get the better calculations. And what you'll see, if I just click done, if you see down at the bottom right hand side there, you've got specific heat. And the specific heat at 55 degrees of water on its own is 4.183 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, and you'll see what happens. It doesn't change much, but if you're doing big commercial projects, it can make a difference between rising up a size and going down a size. And if you can imagine you're trying to specify 300 meters of, I don't know, DN250 DN or something along those lines, and you go to DN300, because the calculation is saying there, the price difference between 250 and 300 could win or lose you a project. But then that's entirely up to you to make that, that, that decision. But as you see, if we change, so we've got 4.183 at 55 degrees. If we change that to, to a more traditional 70 degree flow temperature, as you can see on the screen, it changes to 4.19. Now this will make absolutely no difference whatsoever on, a, on domestic calculations, um, very, very, very rarely, unless they're, unless they're, they're hugely long runs uh, of, of, of pipe work. But this just makes the calculator incredibly accurate for what it for what we're trying to do most um, other um, uh, training facilities that we work alongside with i the i the heating academy in northampton and uh, heat geek as, as as many of you know they will round those figures up to 4.2 um, which is perfectly fine uh, if you're just doing doing standard um, uh, domestic calculations this is a calculator as soon as you the, as soon as you change the flow temperature it will change that by by default so we're designing a 55 degree flow temperature. We'll keep it at that. We're at 4.183. And there we are. When we're now at this point, your, your calculator is completely set up. Now, you've just done a heat loss calculation with Heat Engineer, and you've now got the um, report sitting in front of you. You're on site, and perhaps you're on site now, and you're thinking to yourself, right, OK, I've got a client here now who is, is saying to me, is, is my system heat pump ready or is my heating system low temperature ready? So I want to put a new boiler in or a heat pump or whatever it is. I need to work out now, is this system heat pump ready? So let's just say we now have to work out what our, our, uh, our pipe sizings are. So if we go to calculator at the bottom, you've got three sections at the top. We want the power delta T, which is the one in the middle. And as soon as you hit the one in the middle, it will turn white, as you can just see. That gives you three options. Now, you can see where it says power at the moment. And to the right hand side of it, it's got an equals sign. On an Android, that just shows an arrow. Um, now, all the bits in gray that you can see grayed out on both sides. So you've got flow DT. And uh, you've got the 0 0.16 liters per second and 35 degree, um, uh, 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 sorry, centigrade in the um, bottom right hand corner. Those can all be changed. But what you can do if you want to change, the, so it's, let's just say we want the answer. So if we're looking for pipe sizing, for argument's sake, which uh, um, is, is, is our calculation, we, we, would, we, we would want the equals to be in front of the flow or just by the side of the flow. So what you need to do is click on the flow like that and then you get the equals. You can now change any of the other two parameters. So if you want to get the equal sign moving around, you will click the flow, power or delta T on the left hand side. And then you can change the two other uh, figures on the right hand side of the screen to get your calculations. So let's just say for argument's sake, we had a, um, a heat loss in a bedroom of 600 watts. Now we've got to put that in as kilowatts. 
So we'll click on the 24 that is showing there at the moment, and we'll just type in 0, um, 0 0.6, which is 600 watts. Um, we'll look at our delta T. Now, if we're looking at 55 degree flow temperature and maybe a 45 degree return temperature, we've then got a delta T or a temperature difference of 10 degrees. So we'll put in 10 degrees and click done. That now tells us that we need pipe work in order to carry 600 watts through to that radiator at a delta T of 10, we need 0 0.014553 liters per second running through that. Now this is where this app gets really quite good because you can now, at the bottom of the page, you can see you've got five options. If you click on the second one in, which is pipes, that will come up with this page. Now we click on the top, and let's just say for argument, you can see that you've got all the, all the pipe work that we listed out and ticked earlier on. Let's just say we've got table X copper, maybe 15 millimeter copper, that's running through there. Now, if you remember, this is where we start making engineering decisions, and, and I'll, I'll start explaining a bit about pascals and kilopascals in a second. But you can see what it's saying. To carry 600 watts through um, at delta T10 through some pipe work, it's stating that 10 millimeter pipe work or table X copper is uh, is going to be the correct thing. Now I don't know 10 millimeter table X copper. Um, can we get 10 millimeter table X copper in the UK? It's more likely going to be table Y. So I would change that to table Y if that's the case. Now, if you remember what we said, our target linear pressure drop, as we set in our settings, was 300 pascals per meter. And also our, our velocity within the, ward, within, within the pipe work, we wanted at around one meter per second. Well, if you look at those, we've got 10 millimeter copper, and it's giving us 158.9 pascals for every one meter of pressure drop but it's only giving us a velocity of 0 0.26 meters per second. So it's a very, very low velocity on that carrying 600 watts through to that room. So, okay, if we want to say that is, that, is that system going to be a heat pump ready system? Well, let's have a look at heat pump, if, if, it, if it is a heat pump. We've got 600 watts is staying the same, because that won't change, the heat loss won't change. But let's say we we're going to make it heat pump ready. So we go back to our calculator and we change that delta T10 to a delta T5, which doubles the flow rate, as, it, as, uh, as most of you will know. You click on done, then go back to pipes. If you look at what we've got, I mean, look at um, if you look at 10 millimeter pipe work. It would said simply state between 300 and 500 pascals per meter. We've said 300 pascals per meter. 10 millimeter is, uh, 10 millimeter table Y copper is giving us 524.7 pascals for every one meter of pressure drop but it's still only half a meter a second so it's still under you know nearly nearly half of of, of what our target um, linear pressure of what our uh, target velocity is so personally looking at that i would be looking at 10 millimeter copper and if it's not a, a, a very long run for argument's sake if it's a if it's a drop going to to a radiator of you know three meters three meters to the radiators and three meters back of flow and return um, you know, we, we are we, we would be looking at um, 524.7 times six, uh, because obviously times six meters in pressure drop, and that would be um, uh, your lot. I want to just quickly talk about pascals and kilopascals before we move on, because this is where people get get quite confused. You need to work out what an index circuit is of a system, a heating system, in order for you to size a pump correctly. As long as you get over the index circuit of, of any system, doesn't matter how, as I say, it doesn't matter if it's a one bedroom um, flat or a thousand bedroom hotel, it makes absolutely no difference. Now the index circuit could be a pipe run, it could be a radiator, it could be a emitter, it could be a flow and return, it could be a manifold, or it could be a valve. Uh, whatever has got the most resistance, and the way I like to describe this is, if you imagine, um, I don't know, a, a, a 300 millimeter length of 15 millimeter pipe, sticking vertically, and then a thousand slightly shorter lengths of pipe work. So going from the central part of 15 millimeter, the next one will be 290 millimeters, then 285, then blah, 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 and just keep going on and on and on and on, right the way down and down and down, both sides, and you can have a thousand each side, could be 2000 in, in, in total. And they're all joined up with a bit of 28 millimeter pipe underneath, for argument's sake. 
Now, if you've got a pump that is pumping, as long as that pump can overcome that tallest bit of 300 millimeter pipe in the center, you can see, you can visualize this in your minds, that that water, if it comes out of that one in the center, it will come out of all of the others. And it doesn't matter if there's only five aside or a thousand aside. As long as you're getting over that one in the center, that's your index circuit. So this, this is a very, very big fallacy. A lot of people think that you size pumps by the static height of a building. We did a little poll the other day and it was about 24% of people still thought that. That is absolutely not the case. Now, when you look at a 1550 pump, and not a lot of people understand this um, um, straight away, I mean, the courses that I do, it's very few people that fully understand this. The 15, if it's a 1550 pump, the 15 stands for the bore size. And the 50 stands for 50 kPa, or five meters of head, or if it's 50 kPa, which is kilopascals, it's 50,000 pascals. So if we look at that 10 millimeter pipe drop there on the screen, which is half a meter, um, uh, half a uh, meter per second, so 0 0.53 meters per second, but it's 524.7 pascals per meter, and the smallest pump we can buy has got 50,000 pascals, you can see that if you just times that by the six meters, if it's three meters to the radiator and three meters back, you know, six fives, you've got, what, what have you got? Just 3,000, about 3,200 pascals. And yet we've got 50,000 to play with within that pump. So I hope that kind of makes that quite clear. Um, just to go and do another one, let's just say we're back uh, at our heat loss calculation that we've got and we are trying to size the primary pipework to see if the primary pipework is right for a heat pump. Let's just say we've got a whole heat loss calculation uh, of, I don't know, six kilowatts. And we know that the average heat loss in the UK is between six and eight kilowatts. So let's just say we've got a, we've got a whole um, house heat loss and we're trying to size the primary pipework. So we click on the kilowatts and we just type in six. So we've now got six kilowatts. Um, we want to change, let's say we've got, um, I don't know, if we've got six, uh, uh, in, in a standard house and the primary's coming off a boiler, there might be 22 millimeter pipe work. That sounds pretty normal to me. But that was running at probably a, um, a delta T of say 20. You know, it could have been running at 70, 50. If, if so, you'd have to change the flow, the flow uh, temperature as we said right at the very beginning of this video. But let's just try it at 20 degrees C. So we had 22 millimeter pipe work, but again, we have to change that to table X because 22 millimeter is table X. Now look at 22 millimeter pipe work. That gives us a Pascals per meter drop of 40.2, and it gives us a velocity of 0 0.23 meters per second. So really not a lot. So could we, at six kilowatts of heat load, could we, now, or how do we find out if that we can use that existing primary pipe work for a heat pump? Well, let's have a look. If we go back to the calculator and we change that and we know that heat pumps are generally around DT5. So we change that to DT5, click done, click back on pipes. Right, now we make an engineering decision. We've got, um, let's just say, um, Seven, seven or eight meters, something like seven or eight meters of primary pipe work. Well, what was our target velocity for starters? Our target velocity was, was one meter a second. And we're at 0 0.91. I mean, that's about as close as you're gonna get for your target velocity. That's almost perfect. But we've got 458.3 pascals for every one meter of pressure drop. If we had eight meters, we've got 458.3 times eight. I mean, that's still, still what, 3,500, nearly, nearly 4,000 pascals. And we've already got 50,000 pascals. So you say to yourself, now, is 22 millimeter sufficient for this heat pump upgrade? And when you look at it like that, the calculations don't lie, the maths don't lie. Yes, you could use 22 millimeter pipe work as long as your runs aren't too long. The system is actually asked, is, is suggesting 28 millimeters because you've got a uh, because we, we we stated that we wanted a, a linear uh, a pressure drop of 300 pascals per meter. But I hope that kind of makes it clear. We can play around with this as much as you want to um, to get to, to get your uh, your pipe sizing correct. So I hope this video uh, has helped. Um, and as always, 
please make some uh, make some comments um, in our in, in in the box uh, below um, and let us know what your thoughts are. Many thanks. <laughs>